When I was a Christian many, many years ago, when I first became a Christian, I was a single man, I was a young man, and you know, I was very, really into the scriptures, really studying various things and so forth. But I kind of skimmed over a lot of the things in the scriptures, particularly in the in the apostolic New Testament. I skimmed over a lot of stuff to do with husbands and wives and so forth. They were theoretical. You know, when you're not married, those things are theoretical. Now, having returned to the faith after many, many years away, I, I find myself returning as a husband and as a father. And I actually think that the Most High has brought me back to him, you know, through his sovereignty, through his grace, through his mercy. He has brought me back to him largely because of my wife and of my children because I, I you know I understand I, I really get the understanding now that this isn't just about me I am responsible in a way for my wife and for my children because you know well because of various things that I read in the scripture but I, and and it's kind of it makes sense just generally that the father and the husband is you know the figurehead of the family and and where i go the rest of the family by god's grace will follow and by god's grace i will i will go in the paths of righteousness and the family will follow but it will be the same if if you know for those who go down the paths of unrighteousness then the risk is that the family will also go down that path and uh, i wanted to just talk in this video about some of the things that particularly paul but also Peter talk about in the scriptures with regard to husband and, husbands and wives so we're in Ephesians chapter 5 the famous one you know the whole wives submit to your husbands husbands love the wife and so forth but what I wanted to do before before Paul does say wives submit to your husband he does say something else so in at the beginning of chapter 5 he's, he's giving some general uh exhortations toward holiness and you know be imitators of Elohim of, of God and of Christ uh, walk in love and so forth you know really deep re really weighty teachings which all come by the way all of the teachings the practical teachings that Paul gives come following the really weighty theological matters that he speaks about the you know in, in many parts of the early parts of his book so in Ephesians the first three chapters of Ephesians are talking about the great mystery of God that's been revealed in the saints in these last days and it's talking about you know the the, the mystery that is you know that uh God in Christ is gathering together all things and so forth and you know the predestination and you know those who are called to follow him in this age are predestined are foreknown you know to be first fruits all these kinds of things and then boom from verse from chapter 4 onwards practical teachings and look what he says in chapter 5 verse what's a good place to start maybe verse 18 it says do not be drunk with wine for in that is debauchery but be filled with the ruach with the spirit addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody to the Lord, the Master, with your heart. You know, it's really important to praise. Really important to to praise and sing and worship. You know, with our with our voices to the Most High. If we have voice, let let everything that has breath praise Yahweh. As the I think as the Psalm goes, let everything that has breath praise Him. And so we should praise Him. And one of the things that I've really been enjoying since I've you know got back into fellowship is is attending gatherings and. And singing, singing to the Most High, shouting to Him and praising Him, praising the Son, praising the Spirit, you know, and and that's been a joy, and that's, that that really does strengthen us. I believe, I believe that when we praise and sing with our hearts, with all of our heart, soul, and strength, I believe, truly believe that it strengthens us and helps us to to walk in His ways and to to understand His scriptures and to just be more godly and righteous people through His Spirit, through His power. And it says, verse 20, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Yeshua the Mashiach. Set, and then verse 21, submitting to one another out of reverence for Mashiach, for Christ. So before Paul says in verse 22, wives submit to your own husbands as to the Lord, he says, all of us should be submitting, all believers should be submitting to one another out of reverence for the Messiah. And that's 
that's that should be the the sort of frame the background to the wives submit to your husbands it's not like the wives are the only people who need to be submitting to anybody else in the body of christ but actually all of us should be submitting to one another out of reverence to the messiah you know and that means consider i believe there's there's other uh, others of other of his writings where he says you know considering others better than yourself you know being patient with one another loving one another uh confessing our sins to one another you know uh james Jacob says that you know uh something that i find really fa beautiful really when he says that if you if you see your brother in uh you know in need if you say that you love god and you see your brother in need uh, then you're a liar and the truth is not in you or something like that james both Jacob and Yohanan say something similar the way that we treat each other as believers in the body is absolutely critical Yohanan says in his epistle that it's that's the way that people will know that we are of the truth and that we are in the light and that we are the children of the most high is by us loving one another love is absolute centerpiece of everything to do with Yeshua and everything to do with the most high Yahweh and so submitting to one another out of reverence for the Mashiach is all about obedience to Mashiach and obedience to the Father because his commandment is that we should love one another so all of us should be submitting to one another and then the wives get the um, specific uh, you know exhortation wives submit to your own hus husbands as to the Mashiach to the Lord because why the husband is the head of the wife even as Christ the Mashiach is the head of the church his body and he and is himself its saviour now as the church submits to Christ so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands and of course this rubs a lot of women the wrong way women uh, probably because of the way it's taught but a lot of people see that and think well this isn't very feminist is it wives submit to your husband because the idea is we're thinking oh you know you just obey whatever it is that your husband says and you know uh, the husband is the lead the husband is the boss and so on and so forth and that's the idea but actually we see a better frame of reference or we see a better what's the word a better interpretive tool to understand what this means what wives submit to your husbands by what paul says to the husbands paul now says a lot to the husbands he's got those four you know three or four sentences to the wives now we have to the husbands which is the flip side these are two sides of the same coin so the husbands should be doing what love your wives as in the same way in other words husbands love your wives in the same way that mashiach that christ loved the church and gave himself up for her so that's what it's talking about husbands loving your wives it's talking about giving yourselves up for your wives actually you we're supposed to love our wives like christ loves loved the church how did he love the church he loved the church by so much that he took he went to the cross he went to the he went to the cross and gave himself his body for our sins you know to to, to save his people you know he in, he endured pain and affliction whipping uh scourging uh, humiliation hours and hours it was he was put on the cross on the at the I believe it's the third hour which is 9 a.m and he didn't die until the ninth hour which is six which is uh 3 p.m so he was on that cross for six hours six hours and not to mention all the whipping and scourging that happened before you know just a little insight into what god through paul is telling us as husbands that we should be doing for our wives we must be ready uh when a pastor said the other day we should be ready to die for our wives absolutely we should that doesn't say the wives should be ready to die for their husbands actually but husbands should be ready to die for their wives but at the very least we should be giving ourselves up for her and he continues so that in case we might be you know in in a bit of doubt as to what he means he says christ loved the church and gave himself up for her that he might sanctify her having cleansed her by the washing of the water with the word by you know with the speech so that he might present the church to himself in splendor without spot without wrinkle or any such thing that she might be holy and without blemish you know 
So Christ gave himself for the church in order that he might cleanse and purify the church in order that he might present the church to himself. The, the, the clear imagery here is of is, is, is Christ marrying the church. The church is the bride of Mashiach and Mashiach is the groom and Mashiach did what he did in order that he might present the, groom, the, the, the bride to himself, cleansed, pure and holy. And so in the same way, Paul, Shaul says, in the same way husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself because no one ever hated his own flesh but nourishes and cherishes it just as Mashiach does the church because we are members of his body. So the point, the, you see the teaching there that we should love our wives just as we love ourselves. So the same way that if we're hungry, we eat in the same way that, uh, you know, we wash ourselves, we bath, we cleanse ourselves, we, we sleep when we're tired, we want to rest. We relax, we re we exercise ourselves, we, you know, and so on. All these things we do, our, our bodies, we do, all these things we do to ourselves, you know, to, to look after ourselves and to keep ourselves in good shape. And Nick is how we should be loving our wives. So we should be devoting ourselves, just as we devote ourselves to our well-being, we should be devoting our lives as husbands to the well-being of our wives, just as Christ, Mashiach, does for the called out ones, the ecclesia. And then Paul refers to the Torah, refers to Bereshit, chapter 2, I believe it is. Therefore, or is it chapter 1? Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. You know, this mystery is profound, he says. This mystery is profound, and I am saying that it refers to Mashiach and the church. However, let each of each one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. You know, so it's some deep, deep teachings there that Paul is giving there. But the basic point is that husbands, we're supposed to be loving our wives with sacrificial love, with with devoted love. We are to be devoted to our wives. We are to be devoted to them, to our wife, in order that the wife may be cleansed, may be purified. Basically, the point of the marriage is for the husband to give give ourselves up for the wife. You know, I don't know what else to say on that point, but this is very convicting stuff because in a marriage, you know, as as, as you start getting into all the little niggly arguments and the, 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 the beefs here and there, I'm having to keep checking myself now and realize, oh, no, no, brother, stop, stop, stop. You do not need to be having these silly little arguments. You know, forget it. Give up the point. If it's not, most of the arguments that you have as a, as a husband and wife are, I'm learning in my short time being married, are petty arguments over silly small things. And often, you know, you know the, the one in uh, 1 Corinthians 13 about love keeping no record of wrongdoing. Often it's about that. Well, you might say, so, oh, you know, can you, you know, can you do this, please? Can you remember to do that? And I was, oh no, you don't remember to do that. And you, but well, you don't remember to, you know. It's about looking back and, and remembering these petty things, and and it's a it's a back and forth because you're constantly, you, you know, you're you're trying to score points. But actually, no, that's not the way that Christ Mashiach behaves toward the church. And we have to remember, we have to bear that in mind and be like, look, this petty small thing, let it go, let it go, because the this might sound patronizing to sisters, but. Even if you think that you have a higher understanding on a particular issue than your wife does, you need to just understand that maybe at that point in time, it's not for her to 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 learn that point. At that point in time, actually, no, she'll come to she'll come round to the point whenever you know when she's ready to come round to the point. And how I'm seeing it is that often the, the what we have to do, we have to we have to almost submit ourselves we have to sacrifice our pride and our ego over various things we have to be able to, ready to suffer in order that our wives might start to kind of come round on certain things which you know deep down she should come round to you know so rather than battling and battling and battling every point there's a there's a grounds for a battle actually no you hold fire sit back let that point go you just take the l take the hit because in the long run, it's going to be for the best. There are bigger battles to, to, to fight, if you like. And that's, again, you might see it as patronizing, but if we're looking at developing our wives, you know, just as we develop our bodies, if we're looking at developing our wives and, and helping them to become more Christ-like, more like Mashiach, more like the Most High, then 
that's what it's all about. It's about being patient with them and and taking them on a journey, just as we ourselves are being taken on a journey by, by God, by Christ. Now, there's another passage in Scripture, uh, just to quickly touch on. It's not going to be a long video, uh, which is in, I think it's, is it First Peter? Yeah, First Peter 3.1. And uh, he has a lot more to say to wives. And I think in another video, I'll probably, I'll talk about the instructions to wives. But I just want to focus on the uh, the instruction, the instruction to the husbands down here. So actually, should I read all this about, oh, sorry. Should I read all this about the, um, no, let's just focus on the husbands. So it says, likewise, husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel since they are heirs with you of the grace of life so that your prayers may not be hindered what the what now this is this is that's that should startle you that should stun you and that should really hold you back hold you in your catch you in your in your tracks you know he spent a long time talking to the women and how women should be uh you know submitting to their husbands and so on and so forth looking back to sarah how sarah obeyed her husband and so on and so forth and, da, da, da. and then one little quick word to husbands live with your wives of understanding showing honor to your wife first and foremost as the weaker vessel again that might be uh that might hurt the the modern western feminist mind but there's nothing wrong with being weak, weak. You know, there's nothing wrong with being weak or weaker. And he says, show honor to your wife because she is heirs with you, with you of the grace of life. Otherwise, if you don't show honor to your wife, if you don't live with your wife in an understanding way, taking into account all the things that Paul has said as well about, you know, giving yourselves up for your wife and loving her and as Christ loved the church. If we don't do those things, our praise, prayers rather, could be hindered. You know, the Most High, in other words, will not hear, may may not hear our prayers, and may not, I'm understanding this as may not answer our prayers, if we are treating our wives in a less than holy manner. If we are treating our wives, if we are not treating our wives in the way that we should be treating our wives, and again, that is scary. That is scary, but that is deep, and that is true, and that is inspiring. As a husband, as a follower of the Most High, as a believer in the Most High, as a, and as someone who believes in the power of prayer, this is sobering stuff, you know. So husbands, those of you who are Christians, those of you who are believers, you know, being a husband is not just a sort of, just a thing that we do in order that we might bring up children and someone to live with and have, you know, have a nice life together and, you know, be financially together. No, being a husband, is goes right the way back to Bereshit, goes right the way back to Genesis, as Paul says. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife. And if you think about it, this is a thread that's running through the entire scriptures, right from the beginning of mankind there, in the beginning, when, when Elohim made m m man in his image. Remember he said, let us make man. Let's just go quickly to, to Bereshit, actually. Genesis chapter 1. Bereshit bara. In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. And then we scroll down, all the way down to day 6, I believe. Yeah. Verse 26. And Elohim said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Now, the understanding in a, in a Trinitarian conception is that this was the Father speaking to the Son and the, the Spirit. Let us make man in our image, because some people say, oh, he's he was talking to angels. Well, are, are angels made in the image of God, in of Elohim? I don't think so. I don't know of anywhere it says that in Scripture. Correct me if I'm wrong. But we know that man is made in the image of the Most High God. And this is what we're understanding here, is that this is the, the persons of the, the, the Trinity speaking to one another. Let us make man in our image. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So Elohim made man in his own image. In the image of Elohim, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So again, a little hint into the Echad thing, you know, uh, 
I'll, I won't read all of this, but in in chapter two of Bereshit, when he when he speaks, we see another more detail on the creation of man and woman. That's where you know the 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 he the rib he takes the rib out of um, Adam. He takes the rib out of Adam, and then here we go. Let's read it here. It says he calls a deep sleep to fall on Adam, Adam, and then. He takes a rib out of the side of his flesh and he fashions a woman from that rib and brought it brought the woman to the man. Then Adam said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. That's where marriage comes from. Marriage comes from the creation of man and woman. Um, woman that came out of the man, the same flesh as man. And then man and woman comes together in, in matrimony. That's the root of marriage. And that unity, that oneness, that unity between a husband and wife parallels in a way the unity between father, logos and ruach. Father, Memra and Ruach, Father, Son and Spirit. That unity between the, the members of the Trinity is mirrored in the unity between the members of humanity, the man and woman united together as one flesh. And then fast forward, of course, we had the, the imagery of Israel being married to the Most High. And I, I want to um, recommend you to check out the work of um, Only Love Chica under the channel Prophetic Whirlwind. She is an absolutely amazing teacher of the scriptures and she really brings out the depth of understanding with regard to Israel marrying Yahweh and so forth and, and how that all plays out in the in the feasts, for example, the different feasts of the Moedim of Yah kind of play are, are based around uh, marriage imagery. Brilliant, brilliant teacher. Check her out. It's the... Uh, um, prophetic whirlwind the channel by the way she's a hebrew israelite akoti sister or oh, akot akoti my sister and she uh her channel the channel philos uh, prophetic whirlwind is named after marcus garvey you know you'll learn honestly go and check her channel out you'll learn a, a massive amount but she brings that out as well with regard to the, the children of israel the, the israel being married to the to to the most high and then i'm saying in well paul in the in the in the in the New Testament, Brit Hadashah, he talks about how the relationship between Mashiach and the church, the called out ones, is a relationship between him, the groom, and the church, the bride. And so you think about all of those aspects of unity, Father, Son, and Spirit, Israel and Yahweh, Christ and the Church, husband and wife. This unity is what, it, it, it's a deep, deep, deep unity. Marriage is not just something to be scoffed at, scoffed at. Marriage is a weighty and solemn thing around which all of the truth of the scripture is wrapped, you know. So as a husband and as a believer in the Most High and, and a follower of Yeshua, his son, I must, you know, make sure that I'm approaching my wife with, with, with care, with love, with, with, with sacrificial love in the same way that Christ sacrificed himself for the church you know so that's that's something that i've kind of come to that i've been convicted about really in the last few last few days really but certainly the last few weeks and this is my this is my job as a husband you know it's not just about me anymore it's about my wife and it's about my my offspring as well so thank you for listening just a quick one on what it means to be a christian husband let me just say that that's maybe what i'll call the video so thank you for watching take care and i will see you next time